Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Open Modular Turrets. Open Modular Turrets is a very simple and straightforward mod. You place down turrets, and they will damage or uh, hinder your opponent or target, or targets. I will place down a little bit here so that you can understand the basics of such. Allow me to put down a few blocks. So this here is a turret base. You can also put on it turrets on multiple sides, or tops or bottoms, as you desire. You can fill it inside with ammunition or fuel, upgrade it, or put add-ons on there. Change the range that it is affected by, all determined by the level, tier, etc. that it might be, as well as the guns that you're using. You can also add on inventory expanders, power expanders, as well as pipe things into it, or attach power. Now with this all in mind, it can be a little bit much to try and comprehend all at once. So I'm going to try and break it down bit by bit. So first and foremost, uh, your entry level stuff is not going to have any kind of upgrades in it. It's going to be very, very basic stuff. In fact, let me, let me take all the ammunition out of here as well. Your first level uh, items here, which you will start off with, is a turret base tier one. Now the recipe on these are going to be pretty straightforward. You know, in this case, it's just a bunch of uh, wood and stone with a little bit of redstone in there for the turret base. And your first level I item is either going to be a disposable item turret or a potato cannon turret. I recommend personally the disposable item turret because the potato cannon turret has its downsides. Now, once you have created a disposable item turret, which is made simply with more redstone cobble and wood, uh, more or less. You've got all sorts of simple stuff. I recommend that you check out the um, uh, JEI mod so that you can uh, best get the recipes off these things because I'm going to try and crunch through this without having to go over the recipes too much. So you put down your turret on top by shift clicking it in place and it will place where it is highlighted. Simple enough. You can actually put multiple turret heads on there. Uh, and in the case of the tier one turret base, all the other turret bases are going to be different. But in this one's case, you can actually add on a turret base crank. And what this will allow you to do, if you look, the energy here is 0 out of 500 RF, or redstone flux. If I right-click this once, it will add in 50 RF. If I just hold down, you will eventually start building it up, and you'll max it out over time. Now the range is determined by the turrets that you're attaching. If you attach multiple turrets to multiple sides, it will therefore tell you the highest increment on here. But keep in mind that each turret will only go the range that it is determined to go. So if I use this potato cannon turret, which has a range increment of 15, and I use one of these disposable item turrets with a range increment of 10, the item turret will shoot 10, and the potato turret will shoot 15, even though this will have a max range of 15 listed on the turret base. Now, if you need to remove the items from the outside of the turret base, do not try mining it. You'll waste your time. Instead, just right-click on it and choose Drop Turrets, and all the, item, all the turrets will break off the outside. If for some reason you need to break the base instead, and all items that are connected to it will break as well, you choose Drop Base, and all the items will drop on the ground. As such, pretty easy stuff. Now that you've figured out how to uh, determine your range, how to power the thing, next you determine your ammunition. If you have created the item, it will actually tell you in the, the, your JEI options all the information that you have or need, which I have posted also on these signs as we're uh, going through this bit by bit. So if you want to see that information, you can. Now this is a very basic turret. It will do about one heart of damage uh, per shot every time that it hits something, and it will only go up to a maximum range of 10. But it does require a certain amount of ammunition. In this case, the ammunition by default is going to be cobblestone or wood planks. Uh, it might also include, you could also put in some potatoes, which the potato cannon turret will just accept potatoes only. Uh, or you could put in perhaps even redstone, something like that. I, I can't remember all this stuff, but by default, at least cobblestone and wood planks will work just fine. You can change the configs in this mod considerably to suit your needs and requirements, including changing what this turret will accept. Now that I have your attention on this, 
I'm going to show you that you can also add in, as I've shown before, uh, extra turrets. But you can also, for the item turret, if you have a cobble gin going, just pop a hopper in on the side. As you can see, this one here is currently turned off because of the lever. If I turn this on, the cobblestone will start pouring in, and it will therefore start filling the inventory inside here. And you will have an infinite inventory of ammunition for your turret. Early level, easy, easy stuff. So, now that you know how to understand all this stuff, how do you make it work for you? Well, you've used the drop turrets, the drop base. Now there's configure and target multi. Target multi and target single, I will go over in a, mo in a moment. But configure, click on there and it's simple, straightforward. Do you want it to attack mobs? Yes. Do you want it to attack neutral things like cows or, you know, rabbits? Sure, why not? Attack players? Yes, but it's not going to attack you because you placed it. Now, it may attack other players that come near to it. If you want it to avoid attacking specific people or have people be able to access the turrets, you can then type their name in here as such. Like that, click plus, and their name will be added at the bottom. Now, Kashka is not currently on this. This is a single play, so she is not being added to this and therefore is not listed. Now, if you have this customer on, or customer, this person on here, you can then click on here to say yes for each of the different permissions uh, as are listed here. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then you can scroll through the different people uh, that are available from your trusted player list. If you want to save these settings, I recommend you make a turret memory card. As you can see here, I have one that has a bunch of information on it. If I right click in the air, uh, or actually shift right click in the air, it will clear it and it is now cleared. If I shift right click on the base, it will then remember all this information. Inverted, yes. Multi-targeting, yes. Attack mobs, yes, 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 etc. And then you can just right click and apply it to another turret base. Therefore, if I click on here, configure has just changed on this one, which if I click, click all those to no, click on this again, and I go back in, see they're all yes again, just because I use that item. And it can be very useful because if you have a server and you're shutting the server off, you turn it back on, it forgets all the settings. This can really save you a lot of time and effort. Or if you're making a whole lot of turrets, this is the item for you. It is a little bit expensive, but I mean, it's just going to be one thing that you'll need to make. You won't ever need to make it again, hopefully, because uh, then you can just copy paste all the settings. Now, as far as expanding the inventories in here, I showed you before there is an inventory expander. I recommend you just get rid of those. Skip them all together because a hopper is cheaper and just as effective, in my opinion, in most cases. Or some kind of item transportation system go that pipes things in, uh, as these should accept most uh, types of pipes and things of that nature. Also, the power base expander can be very useful depending on the level that you use. If you want it to carry more power, because in this case, the potato cannon turret uses 10 RF per shot, and it can only store up to 500 RF. That's 50 shots. That's not even a stack of stuff. No, not even a stack of potatoes. You need it to uh, uh, carry more than yes. By all means, put on an extender or you can upgrade the base. You can see here this one has like 329 and a half thousand RF stored in it. So one of the two options is probably the best one for you. But if you want to keep the current base uh, or the current turret base that it is, then I recommend just adding on the uh, uh, and one of those power extenders. So now that you've got your turret base, you've got your turret. You've got your basic turret base crank that you're able to, you know, power it up with. You've got ammunition in here. You configured it to attack just about everything that you could possibly do. I also recommend you have it selected on multi unless you want to specifically kill one enemy at a time. Multi will allow multiple turrets to target multiple enemies at once. If you want them to just focus on one foe because it's very strong or something like that, then in that case, you'll want to choose single. So with this in mind, uh, I have this one currently set to yes on everything. And I have my potato uh, turret set to yes on everything. So anything that comes within their range of 10 to 15 blocks should be attacked by these turrets. Now, as you can see here, they're making pretty good work of these zombies. Of course, it is daytime, so they are being uh, burned at the same time. If I change it to night, you'll see that they are taking a little bit of damage. And in some cases, these projectiles will actually hit multiple targets if they're very close or in a similar uh, block space. Now, 
that that was pretty good. I mean, this is your basic entry level stuff. You can see that some of the RF is used. This one only uses like two RF per shot. This one here, uh, it I just cranked it once, so it uses 10 RF per shot. So this one's more likely to need winding up throughout the night. This one here, you probably don't need to. And also, once again, more reason, because it's just going to be cobblestone or wood planks or some kind of disposable material you might be able to mass produce even passively and not need to do anything with. So now that you've seen your entry level stuff, which should actually be able to take you for quite some time, uh, depending on the mod pack or mod setup that you may be playing with, uh, we move on to tier two, which is really, really a massive step because you go from 500 max RF stored to 50,000 max RF stored. It, it's tremendous on here how much you it, how much of a difference on there. So if you have the opportunity to make a tier two turret base instead of a tier one, then I recommend you do so. Now the problem is you cannot use your basic turret base crank on any of these things. On any of the other uh, turret bases, uh, it's just the tier one. So you will not be able to cheat in that manner. Now there are other ways of obtaining uh, RF, which I will be going over at the end of this video, but for now uh, just know that that is the case. And if you see on here it says 100 max IO, that is in reference to open computers, which is not going to be covered in this, but it does have open computers compatibility as well as a little bit of Thalmcraft compatibility, though Thalmcraft is not out at the time of this video. So as you see here, we have two more turrets available upon entering into Tier 2. Tier 1 turrets only allow the Disposable Item Turret and the Potato Cannon Turret. Tier 2 will allow both of those as well as the Incendiary Turret and the Gun Turret. Moving up to Tier 3 allows two more turrets, plus all the previous ones, and so on. So with this, we've got the Gun Turret, which is more or less a machine gun. It's rather slow to fire and less enhanced, but can be quite effective. It uses ammunition that is a bullet, rather cheap, 64 of them for this kind of uh, you know recipe here. Plus you've got your Incendiary Turrets, which use an ammunition of blazing clay is a little bit more pricey, but can be a lot more effective. Uh, the RF cost per shot has gone considerably higher with this, as well as this at 100 and 250 for each, but they each have different abilities. This one here, of course, is going to be able to shoot better and do more damage at a further range, range of 18 with this turret. Now, this one, the incendiary, is going to have a range of only 12, but it has an area of effect of Five radius. That means 10 blocks wide. Anything that is in that area of when it hits this block here, five blocks that way, five blocks that way, will be affected by the damage as well as potentially being set on fire. It's very effective. It doesn't shoot quite as often. This one here shoots two and a half seconds, uh, or two and a half shots per second. This one shoots 0.8 shots per second, but they're very similar. This one obviously is made for range and single targets. This one is obviously made for uh, just covering a large area when you've got big groups or uh, blood moons or just serious situations to deal with. Now, allow me to enable both of these. All right, they're both enabled. Uh, I also disabled the other two, and I will launch ourselves a little bit of a zombie invasion for them to deal with. And you can see here that they are just currently making short work of this stuff. They're all taking damage quite heavily, as well as being shot down. Now let me shut this one off, just so you can see a little clearer about what's going on. Now with the machine gun, it's shooting anywhere from one to up to three, because of most projectiles having a slight piercing effect to them. And it has a good range, and is just slowly pecking away at these guys. Now of course this guy got away, we'll deal with him in a little bit. But you saw it shot a lot of guys did some damage, but it ran through the ammunition quite quickly. Now, this one here is going to be a little bit different. I'm turning that one on and this one off, so you can see how it can really be much more effective in different situations. When you have a large group, one shot, two shots, three shots, four shots, five, six, and they're all dead, all set on fire. So in six shots, it killed five zombies. Not too bad. It could kill a lot more than that if there are more in an area. So you could feasibly uh, just wreck house with an area of effect. Also don't forget, with tier 2 items, you get two add-on slots and an upgrade slot. One of the, Some of the most powerful things you can do with your turrets is going to be the add-ons and upgrades, which I'll cover once again at the end. But uh, don't forget that. It's a very key feature. 
And I think that's about it for this bit by bit today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others if you think that they'll enjoy this content as well. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.